Hi, today I'd like to talk about from and into traits in Rust. Those two are widely used and allow us to implement friendly and ergonomical APIs. They can be considered as an alternative to method overriding, which actually does not exist in Rust. Let us take a look at implementation of from trait. As you see, it's a generic trait, generic over type T, that requires implementation only of a single method from that takes type t and returns self. This may sound too abstract to you, so let's take a look at an example. Standard library has implementation of trait from u8 for type u16. So we can interpret this as there's just possibility to obtain type u16 from type u8. If we have value number 13 encoded as type u8, we can convert it without any problems into type u16. And it sounds quite logical. If you have something encoded in one byte, it must be possible to keep it to encode it in two bytes. But uh, it wouldn't be possible to convert things in opposite direction. So we cannot convert u16 into u8 because there's some values like let's say 1000 that just not possible to encode in one byte. So this trait just does not exist. Coming back to the standard library. Uh, there are a lot of implementation of trait from in standard library. You can see it right here, and you see the list is super long, it just everything that sounds logical, that makes sense, that can be converted from one type into another without any loss of information, is already implemented in standard library, and we should use it. There are also trade into which works just very similar to from but in opposite direction and so it's reciprocal and you see there's not really a huge list of implementations there are only one implementation that actually relies on trade from for us it just means that if there's implementation of trade from then we're getting implementation of trade into just for free. And let's take a look at real code example. So here I have function main that calls function add and gets sum and prints it to standard output. And function add is extremely simple that takes two integers, adds them and returns integer back. And it works. But what if we want to pass something different than E32? Let's say we want to pass I, I64. Of course, this will not compile because signature does not match. And one of the solutions in this case is to use some other type that is more generic. And in our case, it would be float64. So we can assume that we accept all input in float64 and return also float64. Then, of course, we'll have to cast all inputs into float64 here. And it works, but Still, it's not really fine because, I mean, we have to cast every time we want to pass data. It's not really cool. So, that's where we can use generics. Let's say we want to accept any type that can be converted into float64.
So we just we accept everything. We don't care what. What really matters is that we just can convert it into F64. If I compile this, it must fail. Yeah, because here we actually need to call method into to to turn this data to turn A and B into float64. Oh, I have syntax error here. Yeah. Now, uh, what? Yeah, of course we can remove this. But it still will not work. Because types are different. I mean, input types A and B have different, are different. If they would be the same, it must work. So we have to define them here as two different types. Let's call them TA and also TB. Now we are able to pass two different types. They are treated separately. Now this looks a little bit ugly, so we can refactor this and just rewrite with where statement. And we also can write this with trade from. And actually it's quite interesting. So if you want to use trade from, we would write it like this. There's F64 that is that implements from for TA and from for TB. And here it would be like this. Which one to use from or into doesn't really matter. Just whatever works, whatever looks better in particular context. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.